If you haven't heard of the story of the Green Children of Woolpit, you're in for a real treat. Woolpit is an area East England, which was once known as East Anglia, and this story comes out of the 12th century. It is a historical story. In other words, it's not just fable. It's not just folklore. This is a story that has stumped historians. Now, how it goes is there were two children that were discovered by local reapers who were reaping local crops. And these children were discovered in one of the animal pits that was used to trap animals such as wolves and other animals from entering into the common areas. These two children were described as having green skin, a foreign language, foreign clothes, and they refused to eat any food even though they were starving. The only food that they would accept were broad beans that were pulled directly out of the garden for them. And they survived on these for months until they were able to eat bread. Now, the brother died shortly after he was baptized. And I know some people are going to find that a very interesting fact. The daughter eventually joined society, learned English, and as she aged, she started to tell a story of her origin. And this story is really quite curious. But before I get to that, I just want to note that she ended up marrying somebody very significant in British society. His name was Richard Barr. And Richard Barr was an ambassador. He was involved in the Justice Department. He was a clergy. He was a scholar. And he was otherwise very well known to King Henry II, Richard I. He dealt with the Vatican as well as the Archbishop of Canterbury. And the Archbishop of Canterbury did not like Richard Barr. He described him as an evil counselor. And the language around that description reminded me of the character of Wormwood from Lord of the Rings. Um, the Archbishop did not like Richard Barr. Richard Barr was also involved in the Crusades and the connections there. So clearly Richard was somebody involved in religion, politics, and culture. And this is who the, ch the, the girl married. So her story starts in a pit. Her skin was green. She spoke a foreign language. She was described as petulant and difficult. She couldn't speak the language. She refused to eat anything other than raw beans. And I can't imagine how that would be for a normal digestive system. If you've ever eaten raw beans, they're incredibly violent towards the digestive system. But that's what her and her brother ate. And eventually, over time, she learned the language. She melded into society. She became a servant. She married high. And then what? Did she have children? If so, what did they look like? Did they ever have green skin? Was it a genetic trait? Was it a hybrid DNA? You tell me. Let me know what you think about the children, the green children of Woolpit. Uh, remember to comment, like, and subscribe. I have one more question about the green children of Woolpit, and that is why they required to eat such green beans and green food. Was it what they were familiar with, and as a result they felt safe and comfortable with? Or was it some other biological need? Was there something in the green bean itself that tied to their green skin color and there was some kind of symbiotic relationship there? Uh, this is a, a question outside of my realm of expertise, but you, the viewer, you might know or you might have a theory. Post the link in the comments section and myself, Beth, and Paul, we take a look at the comments and we'd love to know your thoughts. It is reported that Agnes did describe where she originated from, or her origin story, and she described it as the land of St. Martin. And she said there was no sun, that all the hab inhabitants and all the people were green, just like her and her brother. Uh, there was perpetual twilight, and that the land, it was luminous. It could be seen across a river. Now, many people have tried to understand this legendary land of St. Martin, and some people have come up with some logical explanations, but this remains a mystery. And there are a couple St. Martins you could look at. I've posted a couple of maps here. One is in the area of, of Sicily. And there are monasteries in that whole, whole area. Um, and there could be some ties there. But then there's also the one in the Caribbean. And maybe, you know, they were seafaring people that came across. I don't know. There's really no historical reason why these children were found in the pit, why they were green in color, why she believes that she came from a green ancestry and a people who were green just like her. So lots of mysteries here. Now I've kind of been curious as to why or where her brother was buried and whether or not there might even be DNA still kicking around. And I've, I still wonder about her children. Did she have any? And if so, where are they and what did they look like? The story of the green children of Woolpit has honestly made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up and it sent me down the rabbit hole. And once I go down the rabbit hole, I'm contacting our subscribers, I'm asking for their insights and information. And you know what? No one has additional information yet. 
I'm going to reach out to you guys, our viewers and our subscribers, to help us dig around and see if you can find any more to explain the origin story of these two children who had green skin. Were they orphans who were malnutritioned? Were they aliens? Were they hybrid DNA? Were they some kind of subterranean people? There are simply more questions than answers when it comes to the green children of Woolpit. Next up, I'm going to post some video from various experts in the field of hybrid and alien DNA. I am curious if there's any connection between hybrid DNA and the green children of Woolpit. But the point was, even before I started doing hypnosis, Bud was uncovering hybrids and the making of hybrids and hybrids who were adult. And, and although he didn't quite know it, and we, we were still sort of circling around it, uh, but it was there. And uh, now when I take a look at the subject, it's all about hybrids. What is a hybrid? Well, hybrid is just a combination of human and hybrid. And I, I use the word hybrid to differentiate from all the other hybrids who are not moving in, mm -hmm. essentially. Now, having said that, that's not exactly correct. <laughs> <laughs> because there is some security hybrids will actually move into an apartment so they can be close to uh, the, the abductee who's taking care of a hybrid. Uh, however, security hybrid and security hybrids are not full, are not human. I mean, they're they're human, but they have a one-track mind only, and that is security. That's all they think about. That that's it. Period. In other words, their brain f does not function in a normal way that ours does. Whereas with hybrids, they do. They, their, their brain functions normally like ours does, except that they have some abnormal things which enhances their brains. I admit, that's a lot of information to take in, the difference between humans, hybrids, and hubrids. I can't help but wonder how that could potentially tie to the mystery we just discussed, which are the green children of Woolpit. Is it possible that there was genetic modification that could allow for some of the things that Agnes described in particular, meaning that she believes she was subterranean at one point, uh, that they ate broad beans only for several months, um, and that the green color of their skin changed as they adapted to life on the surface. If that's the case, there's definitely an interesting discussion to be had. And if the dark journalist or Dr. Jacobs ever watches this video, and I hope you do, please let me know if you have any hypotheses about how the green children of Woolpit ended up getting their green skin. Next up, I've got a clip by L.A. Marzulli, and he's going to describe a surgical procedure that Dr. Lear has done on more than a dozen people to remove what appears to be an alien implant, and that the technology within the implant itself exceeds anything known within human invention at this time. And L.A. Marzulli also believes that these implants are impacting human DNA, and perhaps this is another factor in regards to understanding uh, alien theory when combined with human DNA and parts of our human history. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. These implants are giving out a, a clock speed of a frequency, which we believe is a sawtooth, which means it's a computer wave, it's a clock speed, at 300 gigahertz, which is 100 times faster than the fastest computer we have on the planet. Inside these things are carbon nanotubes not found in nature. And other compartments, we have no idea what they're doing. But I asked Lear, I said, in your professional opinion, what do you think this implant is? And it's sort of a gruff, and I'll do my best imitation, he goes, well, it's changing the person's DNA. If what L.A. Marzulli is saying is correct, and Dr. Lear, what he, he found surgically is correct, then this would be substantial and substantive proof that alien life exists and it is intelligent and that it is involved, perhaps in a nefarious way, in human development and evolution. If you go back to our Shed Show Talk playlist, you'll actually notice I did a video called Artificial Intelligence, and one of the things that was discussed there is whether or not there's an engineering plan to change human consciousness, and if that combines some kind of hybrid of AI, which is technology, and human genetic modification. So obviously this is another layer to that discussion. If someone's really willing to look at the evidence and realize that the combination of artificial intelligence and genetic modification towards our food supply, 
our animal population and ultimately towards humans, then you can start to see that there's a concerted effort to change the way we exist on this planet. And that could be for our betterment, but it might be for our absolute detriment. And it comes down to who or what is the source of these changes? In the artificial intelligence video, I suggested three options. One is it's human invested, two, it's corporate invested, or three, it's foreign invested, meaning it's coming from a source outside of our realm of humanity. It could be deity, it could be alien. I left that up to you to decide. Next up, listen to what David Ick has to say about what happens as a result of genetic modifications to our food supply the home of genetically modified food. Why? Because it's to genetically modify us. I find it absolutely fascinating that nearly a millennia after the green children of Woolpit, we're still having the conversation about alien life, DNA modifications, and the origin of our species. This is really fascinating. I'm Beth with Shit Show Talk, and this is a wrap for Mystics and Mysteries today. I look forward to reading your comments and seeing you next time. Remember, if you feel the hairs on the back of your neck stand up, it's time to record your story and send it to Shed Show Talk.